HBO processing that we've got on uh, really quite a wide range of uh, Rode devices now with the Rodecaster Pro 2 and then also the upcoming Rodecaster Duo, which is available for pre-order now as well. Uh, and then the Streamer X that I've been trying out uh, and also the PodMite USB to some extent has also got a lot of this onboard processing. And I think that when you, it comes to the, uh, these devices, I mean, they're, they're all so accessible as consumer devices, but really there is an immense amount of power underneath the hood in, uh, in all of these devices um, that I think a lot of people maybe don't understand quite how to sort of tap into. So uh, the point of this stream then is to go into some of these uh, advanced audio uh, processing, uh, advanced audio processors <laughs> that they have on board, such as the compressor, the noise gate, and so on, uh, and just look at all of the different settings, because I think that sometimes these the terms even involved in setting them up are a little bit of a mystery to uh, to a lot of people. So, and certainly they were with me me when I started using these devices. So uh, that's the uh, the point of uh, today's stream. <laughs> I'll also be announcing the winner of the uh, Rodecaster Duo giveaway, which I've been running for the past month. Um, and so I'll uh, announce that a little bit later on. Keep you all in suspense. <laughs> uh, the hi to everyone in the chat, Rich and uh, Paul, and uh, also Kalonji as well. Great to see you here. Uh, and obviously, uh, Jeff, the timekeeper of Take One Tech, who always <laughs> reminds me to start the stream in the uh, backstage area in the Discord. Okay, so let's get going. And uh, first of all, let me just talk about uh, what exactly it is I'm talking about. Uh, if we just come over to the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, um, then if you tap on any one of these uh, uh, microphone inputs, um, then you have uh, all of this advanced audio processing. By the way, they also have a, a lot simpler version of this with those three different levels that's just going to make it a lot easier to sort of dial in some initial settings. Uh, I'm specifically talking about the advanced settings here, though, uh, which is all of these things here. So uh, the uh, high pass filter, the de the noise gate, the compressor, equalizer, and so on, or exciter, and the, uh, the panning left and right. And there's also a global one, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later as well. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, how this all looks, uh, we think of this in terms of a signal chain. Um, and if we uh, just sort of plot this all out now, uh, the very first thing, obviously, is we've got our microphone that's going into the device, be it the Rodecaster Duo, the Rodecaster Pro 2, or the uh, Streamer X, as I mentioned. Um, and then the first thing that we do is we set the microphone gain. So uh, that is basically how much it is, if indeed needed to be uh, boosted up uh, to a level that uh, gives you a... a a reasonable level of audio coming in. Um, and then we've got this whole chain of these different things. Uh, the first one being the high pass filter. Um, that's going to knock out some low end noise. And I will go into all these in more detail, obviously, but I'll just sort of run through them first of all. The high pass filter um, is knocking out some of the low end tones um, that uh, you maybe don't want. So background noise from air conditioning, road noise, or things like that. Um, then we have the de which is intended to remove those S sounds <laughs> out of your uh, your voice. And I'll talk about how that all works as well. Uh, the noise gate is something that is going to basically open and close um, when you are talking. And if I stop talking, then everything goes completely quiet. Whereas when I am talking, you can hear that there is a slight hiss in the background from the uh, from the air con, although we've reduced that slightly with the, uh, the high pass filter. Um, but there is that sort of noise in the background. But when I stop talking, the noise gate shuts and everything goes completely silent. And there is a varying degrees of you know, how, uh, how much you want the gate to close. And I'll talk about all of that uh, in due course as well. Uh, and these are all subtractive processes. So they're all taking away something from the signal that's coming in. So the high pass filter, as I said, removing that uh, lower end no noises. And then the uh, DS are removing some of the uh, particular frequencies where the S sounds are coming in and the noise gate Obviously, you know, completely shutting or removing some of the uh, audio, uh, d you know, at a certain threshold, which we'll talk about. Um, next, we've got the uh, compressor and the compressor. The point of that is to try and level everything out. So um, from a point of view of the, the volume. So it's going to make uh, potentially be boosting up the, uh, you know, the quieter sounds when you're talking qu more quietly. Uh, but then if you talk loudly, then there would be this uh, sort of big potential range. And so it's kind of squashing that all down or compressing it uh, to make everything a little bit more even. Um, and uh, I'll show you how that is all working a little bit later as well. Next, you've got the equalizer, which is how you're adjusting specific frequencies. Um, so whether you want to sort of boost up your uh, lower end um, tones or the, uh, the higher end, uh, you've got control over all of that. Um, and then the next one would be, and now there's these two things which are really, um, I would say they're a bit of a mystery. They're not really, but there, there is obviously science to them. Um, but it's not quite as um, uh, obvious from the... 
um, from the settings exactly what these are doing, but the Aural Exciter and the Big Bottom. So these are affecting the um, the higher ends and the lower uh, lower tones uh, specifically, and the Aural Exciter intended to give you more sort of clarity at the higher end, and the, uh, the Big Bottom, uh, amusingly named, is uh, intended to uh, add some richness to those uh, lower tones. Uh, and these are all additive processes. So uh, the equalizer potentially, although could be uh, subtractive as well, um, but they are adding something to the to the audio. Um, and this is important to note that this is a chain, uh, i.e. these things happen in this particular sequence. Um, and so it's important to realize that so that you don't go and adjust something at the, you know, the top end uh, or the, sorry, the, 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 the far end of the signal chain uh, and then go and adjust something further back uh, because that will have an impact on that thing that you've already adjusted. So it's always better to go through and do these things in this specific order when you are setting them up. Uh, and then finally, we've also got the uh, left and right panning. So on the Rocaster Pro 2 um, and uh, the uh, the Streamer X, uh, you may want to pan things over to one side or the other. Um, and why you might want to do that, by the way, is if you've got two mics coming in, you might want uh, one thing on the left track and one thing on the right, for example, potentially. Um, although, uh, you know, with the Rocaster, you do have those isolated tracks in any case. Uh, and then finally, you've got the actual fader. So once all of this stuff has been set up, um, then you've obviously got the fader on the Rocaster, uh, which is, or indeed, you know, the uh, the control here, the little dial here, um, which is then effectively um, either boosting this or reducing it. So um, that's the uh, that's the sort of way that this uh, signal chain. Uh, all looks. Now, incidentally, the uh, PodMic USB, um, when you have that plugged in over USB into the computer, um, that will be uh, controlled in just the same way as we're going to look at for the Rodecaster Pro 2 using Rode Central. Um, and you do have a lot of these things as well just built into this microphone. I think, I've, I mean, I'm going to do a full uh, review on it. I've uh, been a little bit uh, poorly last week, so I haven't had time yet. But um, I've compared it to the, um, the Shure MV7, um, and they're very similar in terms of they've got the same functionality of uh, XLR and USB as well. Um, so uh, they're very similar in that respect. But actually, the PodMic USB has a lot greater control over the audio when you are using it over USB. Uh, and in fact, it does have most of these um, things that we've got in this signal chain. The only ones that are missing there are the uh, the deesser, the equalizer, and the uh, the panning isn't in there as well. Um, but having the built-in noise gate um, and compressor, I think, are, is just really uh, really great in particular. Um, and the high-pass filter, it all means that when you are using this over USB, uh, you can you know really do a lot to address room noise, which is something that the uh, short MV7 never did. I used to have to use when I was using that over USB. I would use uh, audio hijack to uh, knock out the background noise and you know do a few of these other things but uh, yeah having it all built into the um uh into the the the, the actual device itself is uh, is really really handy so Anyway, so we're going to go through these in a little bit more detail and uh, look at some of these settings because, as I say, when you do come into the uh, settings for any of these things, in fact, if I just come over to uh, my uh, Rode Central for a moment, here we are looking at my Rodecaster Pro 2. And if I go into the mic settings here, um, you've got the initial gain. So if we go back to that signal chain for a second, uh, that is what I was talking about. The very first thing, you've got the microphone input and then you go down to the mic gain. Um, so this is where we would be setting that is just this initial gain coming in. Uh, now, when it comes to the uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2, you do actually have the screen on it, which gives you a little bit more visibility of this. Uh, if you are doing this all through Rode Central, um, then you don't quite have the same sort of uh, uh, visual in terms of uh, you know what this uh, this input gain is. Whereas if I come over to the Rodecaster Pro 2, um, you will see that as I'm talking here, um, we've got exactly the same figure, that 57 decibels. Um, it's just a case of looking to see that your audio is coming in within this sort of green strip here. Uh, so there is the bar that's bouncing up and down when I'm talking. But then just underneath that, you'll see that there's this kind of green band and then a red band. So you want it to be that when you're talking, it's coming in there. So that's kind of like the first thing that you're going to set in the signal chain is making sure your gain is set here. Um, I have been on uh, coaching calls with a number of people where uh, they haven't set this. And so they found that they've been trying to increase the level of their microphone purely by using this fader here. And although obviously you can do that, as you can hear, um, that's not technically the, the correct way to do it. You would ideally want to have it so that when this is at unity, which is uh, unity just basically means it's not uh, either 
adding anything or subtracting anything to it. Um, and so this level here that you see where the, uh, the sort of big uh, solid line, or the thicker line, I should say here, um, that means that basically the fader is not adding anything or subtracting anything to the signal. So ideally, you want to get your gain set here first on the mic um, with the, uh, the fader in this position just here. So um, then the, uh, the next thing down, if I just come back over to, uh, to here a second, and I'm actually, having said that you need to do these in order, I'm actually going to cover them in a slightly different order because it will make more, uh, more sense coming back to some of the settings in them a little bit later. So I'm going to start with the noise gate and then do the compressor, and then we'll circle back to the others just because uh, it will make uh, more sense that way. At least I think to, so. Maybe to my, maybe just to my mind. Um, but in any case, here you can see that we've got uh, the gain there as well. Uh, so this is back in Road Central. Um, so as I say, there's the uh, the high pass filter here, uh, the DSA uh, and the noise gate, and it's these things here that I'm talking about. Uh, you know, what do these terms in particular mean? The threshold, the attack, hold, release, uh, range, and what you'll notice is as you go through, there are some similarities between these. So uh, you know, this one has a threshold, this one has a threshold, uh, and actually, threshold is basically the point at which uh, these things start acting on your on your audio. Uh, and again, some similar similar things here attack and release you'll see these here as well attack release this one's got hold so what are all those terms so hopefully uh, by the end of this video <laughs> i will have explained uh, what you uh, what you, you know what all of these different things mean so uh, that's the uh, the point of this so if we come back to um uh, here for a second and we will go into exactly what we are talking about here and what these things are acting on i'm not going to do a full um uh, tutorial on this i did actually cover uh, the you know the, the sort of very audio basics um in a previous live stream and also my uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass, but uh, for the time being, I'm just going to uh, try and simplify this a little bit. Uh, and what all of these dynamic processors are acting on is uh, one of a number of things. Now, if you think about the volume of your audio, and we think about an audio wave, um, the amplitude, so how big the wave is, and in actual fact, it's not a wave like this. It is just a series of, you know, if you think about a speaker uh, sort of pulsing in and out, what it's doing is it's, it's compressing, uh, adding compression into the Let's not get confused with <laughs> dynamic compression, but it's compressing the um, uh, the air effectively, um, and that's how the sound is being transmitted by a series of compressions and rarefactions. So where there's increased pressure and decreased pressure, and that is actually what this wave represents. Um, so the the sort of peaks at the top there are where the air is most compressed, and then the ones down at the bottom is where it's kind of most uh, uncompressed or the, where the rarefaction is happening. Um, and so that is why we have that this representation of audio as a wave. Um, and in fact, the amount of that sort of uh, uh, compression there is um, is effectively the volume. So if you have a, you know, a bigger wave, um, then that is in terms of a, a taller wave, that means that it is going to be louder. And if it's shorter, it's going to be uh, quieter. Um, so that is uh, that is amplitude, and that's measured in decibels. And I won't get into the different decibel scales. Uh, there are a number of them. Uh, we're talking about dBFS, which is decibel full scale here. Um, but um, uh, as I say, I won't get into that too much. And also, obviously, that wave is something that's really simplified in any case, because in actual fact, what we've got is a whole range of uh, amplitudes. As I'm talking, there are various different things coming in. So, uh, you know, if you've looked at the, uh, the bar down at the bottom of your uh, video editor of choice, and you look at the audio uh, line, you're going to see something that looks more like this because it is just a sort of complex mass of different um, uh, different amplitudes uh, and different wavelengths as well, which is the uh, the pitch. So uh, going back to that wave, uh, you know, the actual time it takes for one uh, wave is the uh, is the uh, with the wavelength, which is the pitch. So if it's tighter together, it's going to be higher pitch, and if it's uh, you know a longer wavelength, then it is going to be a lower pitch. Um, so you've probably seen something like this, but this again doesn't really give the full picture um, because in actual fact if you were to sort of take a sort of slice through this at any point um, there again there are not just you know there is a certain amplitude there overall um, but in actual fact what you've got is a whole range of different frequencies and the way that you measure this is using something called a spectrum analyzer. Won't go into too much depth about how, how these work, um, but you basically have the amplitude. And so imagine this as a split, you know, a, a, a particular slice in time. Um, you've got the 
the amplitude, um, but then this is across a whole range of frequencies. Um, so you may have the sort of lower frequencies, uh, there might be a certain peak from, uh, as I say, something like the aircon coming in at that low frequency, um, and then just even my voice has got a whole range of different frequencies uh, that are coming in. And this uh, particular thing here would be, you know, changing over time with everything that is, uh, is going on. So. Uh, when we talk about dynamic processing um, and think about these two charts here, uh, basically what we're doing with any of these dynamic processes is we're either affecting the amplitude or we're affecting the frequency or we're maybe ref uh, affecting the amplitude with respect to frequency. So it might be uh, that, you know, in this particular chart here, uh, we're actually pulling down, you know, this specific frequency um, up here to sort of reduce that aircon noise. Uh, or it may be that, uh, you know, we're too loud in these peaks. Um, and so we want to just reduce those peaks. So this is what dynamic processes are doing. They're affecting some aspect of, uh, of these. Now, when you think about these charts, or when you see these charts, um, then some of the, the graphical representations that we have in the Rodecaster software um, or the uh, Stream X software, or indeed for the pod mic, um, some of these charts will then begin to make a little bit more sense. So what I'll do as I go through, I'll kind of reference them to, uh, to these. Uh, the other thing we have is uh, another chart, which you'll see in the Rodecaster as well, which is basically the input versus the output, because uh, as we know, with the signal chain, you've got you know, the mic coming in, um, but then you've basically, from each one of these different points along the signal chain, there is something coming in, and then there is something coming out on the other side. And so we often look at the input versus the output. And this will all become clear, hopefully, as we go through uh, as well. So I'm going to start with a noise gate. And although technically, you know, this isn't the first one in the chain after, um, you know, we've set the mic gain as we went through that list, um, it is a kind of very uh, relatively simple one, hopefully. Um, so we'll start with this one because then some of the other things that we'll look at later are going to be uh, working in a, in a kind of similar way. So if we have the, uh, the amplitude or the volume over on the uh, left-hand side and we've got time uh, running along the bottom, um, imagine, if you will, that we've just got a constant tone uh, going into the microphone um, and it's just basically an input volume and then the input volume increases and then the input volume decreases again and then it stays flat at that volume. So this effectively would just represent a single, you know, constant sound. Uh, very unrealistic, but nevertheless, it will uh, serve our purposes for, for this. Uh, and perhaps I should just go to the noise gate um, to show you what we're going to be actually looking at here in terms of the, uh, the different settings. So if I just quickly pop over to the noise gate uh, settings here, you can see that what we've got is we've got the threshold, we've got attack, we've got the hold, release, the range, and the hysteresis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, go through basically what all of these different things mean. So if we go back uh, to our little chart here, um, so we've got our input level coming in and uh, what we have is then we're going to have an output level. So it's going into the noise gate at this input, uh, but then it's coming out on the, uh, the other side there as well. So the first thing we have is a threshold, and that is the point at which the noise gate is going to act. And by the way, the noise gate is intended to either let through audio or close it off to some extent. So as I mentioned before, you know, the noise gate on this microphone is set to basically completely shut when I stop talking. That's why it goes completely silent when I stop talking. Uh, and that's kind of the point of this. Now, it doesn't have to close completely, but if you just think about it as a, you know, literally a gate that is opening up to let the audio through, and then it's closing uh, again to close that off. And it may close partly or it may close all the way. Um, but there's some point that we're going to say, right, well, if the volume is higher than a certain level, uh, we want to let that audio through. And that is the threshold. So anytime the, the volume of the input goes above that threshold, um, then this is going to open up this gate. Um, so if we look at the input versus the output then here, um, we've got the, uh, the output volume at the moment. You know, you would say when I stop talking, is right down at the bottom, it's zero. Uh, but then when we open, when we go past the threshold, that's going to trigger this gate to open. Um, and so there is going to be a time that it takes imaginatively to swing open. Um, and this thing here, this time, uh, that's what we call the attack. So that's how long it's going to take to actually activate. Um, and 
with this very simple example, you know, you might think, well, why doesn't you just do it immediately? But when we look at a, a more realistic sort of waveform, then it will hopefully make a little bit more sense. Um, so then the, uh, the gate is going to stay open. Um, and then we're going to go back down below that threshold. Um, and so then there is going to be a period where uh, it says, right, well, OK, we've dropped down below that particular level. But like if I take a breath, for example, do we want the gate to shut then? Or do we want it to, uh, you know, stay open for you know, a little bit more? Have I actually really stopped talking? Think of it like that. So that period there where you want to just kind of uh, hold the gate open just in case, uh, you know, there's going to be more to come, as it were, <laughs> then uh, that is the hold. Uh, and then after that time has elapsed, if there is, you know, if we haven't gone back above the threshold, um, then the gate is going to shut. And that is the release time. So that's how long it takes to stay shut. So those three things there the attack, the hold, the release, and uh, obviously the, the threshold, that's all to do with like how quickly uh, this thing is opening and closing. And so if we come back to um, those uh, different uh, things we've got here, uh, we've basically just then looked at this, the threshold. So that is the level at which the, uh, the, the, uh, the gate is acting um, and when it's going to decide to open. We've then got the attack, that's how long it takes to physically open, the hold, how long it should stay open if we drop down below that threshold, uh, and then the release is how long it's going to take to uh, close. Um, so that's what those three are there, so those four, I should say. So then we've got the range and the hysteresis, and uh, let's have a look at what those are. If I come back to the uh, the right <laughs> scene for a second, uh, there we go, that one. Um, so. Um, Obviously, this waveform is just not realistic. It doesn't represent uh, what you know a, a, an audio waveform would uh, typically look like. So if we take something a little bit more uh, uh, realistic here, Oh, and by the way, I should say, first of all, he says, uh, acting like he meant to do this, um, the uh, the amount that the gate closes by, I talked about before how you know mine closes completely. Hence, it goes completely silent when I stop talking. Um, however, you may want it to be that the, uh, the gate doesn't close completely. And this amount that it's going to close by the, is called the range. So if we actually wanted it to be that, OK, when the gate shuts, it doesn't shut completely, but it still allows some of that audio through, um, then, uh, then that, is the, uh, that is the range. And if I go back to my um, uh, noise gate here, um, then uh, this is what this figure is here. Now the range, as I say, mine is set to uh, set to 100, which means it is shutting the gate completely. But if I was to turn this one up to zero, you can probably hear that when I uh, uh, that that basically means it's not closing the gate at all. You can probably hear there's some background noise if I uh, stop talking. And as I wind that down, then it's basically closing the gate more and more when I uh, when I stop. Personally, I do like to have it so that it's just completely shut so that when I'm not talking, uh, there is nothing coming through. So uh, if that is what you're looking for, that is the particular setting that you'll want to uh, change is the, uh, the range. So if I come back uh, to this, uh, there's one other term then, the hysteresis, which is a bit of a, uh, a weird name. And this is um, going to do something slightly different. So uh, as I said, that sort of box shaped waveform is not realistic. This also is not realistic. However, if we just think of this as the volume, you know, the volume of my voice is going up and down all of the time. Uh, so just assume that it's, uh, yeah, this is a crude representation of uh, somebody talking, their voice going higher and lower in terms of volume, uh, not tone here, we're talking about just purely the amplitude. Um, so here we've got the threshold. Now let's just say that we set the threshold at this particular level. Um, what you would have then is if we go back to the output, um, you know, every time we went above that threshold, given those settings that we've got, uh, and barring the sort of attack and release at the moment, um, then every time we go above the threshold, the gate's going to try to open. Every time we go below it, it's going to try to shut again. So as you can see here, just sort of hovering around that particular threshold, it would mean it'd be constantly trying to open and close. Uh, bear in mind the time it takes to open and to close and all of that, um, then it would give you some uh, you know, very poor audio if you didn't have this set to the right level. But just naturally, you know, your voice might drop down below this in any case. So they have um, what is called um, the, uh, the hysteresis, which is basically a different level set um, at a certain level, which is where the actual closing is going to take place from. So uh, if we've got the, uh, the threshold there, and that is the point that, at which the gate opens, uh, hysteresis is going to set a close level, which is actually lower than that. And what that means is, uh, you know, when I go above the threshold, then the gate opens, uh, but then it doesn't actually even try to close again 
uh, until we go back below that lower level. Um, so uh, in this case, what would happen is the gate would be open uh, for those uh, parts that you can see there um, from uh, point A to point B, and then it would close, and then it would be open again from C to D. So it's going to be doing a lot less of this sort of opening and closing, and you can fine-tune where this uh, difference between the open and close is, as I say, with the hysteresis. And that is basically when you see the number of 0 0.25, if you think about the total you know, the volume, I should say, of the, uh, um, of the open point, then if you've got hysteresis of 0 0.25, it's going to have point, you know, 25 percent of that, 25 uh, percent uh, lower, I should say, um, than that open point. And in fact, when you sort of see this chart, uh, and then you look how this looks on the, uh, on the Rodecaster itself, so if I just come down to my top-down shot here and show you the Rodecaster, and if we look at the noise gate, uh, now what you can see here is uh, this is effectively that chart happening live. So uh, you can see that uh, anytime I'm above this dotted line here, the first, the, the top dotted line, uh, the noise gate is opening, uh, but then the hysteresis here is set to uh, 0 0.5 or 50%. Uh, so that bottom line there is at that lower level. And if I was to change this up and down, you can see how it's actually moving this line up and down. So that is effectively the sort of closing point. Uh, so if I was to put this at 25, uh, that now is looking uh, similar to that chart that we've just had a look at. So when you are looking at the charts on the, uh, the Rodecaster versus in the, uh, in the uh, Rode Central, if I go back to Rode Central for a second, uh, we've got the exact same thing here. Uh, I can change these and these are actually matching exactly what's on the, the Rodecaster and you can see how that's having the same effect there, moving that up and down, uh, but you just don't get that live view of uh, of what's happening uh, to be able to see so it is a, it is actually for me I always prefer to do these adjustments on the Rodecaster itself because you actually see the live waveform on there uh, so just as you're seeing here everything's moving up and down uh, on there and you can see the points at which it drops down below the uh, uh, the, the, the threshold there uh, for the open and the uh, the close so that is uh, that is the noise gate, and hopefully uh, that explains <laughs> what all of these uh, these terms mean. Um, and just one second, let me switch this over. Uh, sorry, my uh, my Discord. Um, so that is the, uh, the the noise gate. So let's have a look then at the the next one, which I'm going to talk about, which is compression, because this is uh, one again that has uh, these terms. It's got threshold, uh, which is uh, similar to uh, you know we've we've just looked at, uh, but it does also have some other ones here, ratio um, and the gain as well. So let's talk about exactly what all of these are. And uh, there we go, <laughs> the, the rest of my little animation there of uh, hysteresis and how you can change that. So with a compressor, what we're trying to do here is, as I mentioned before, we're trying to kind of even out all of the audio. So uh, potentially boosting up the uh, lower tones if you're whispering. Uh, but then if you start talking loudly, then bringing that down so that everything is a lot more even. So when you look at the uh, the waveform once again, um, if you wanted to reduce those peaks, um, then you could just sort of squash the whole thing. But in actual fact, all that's doing is what you've just seen there of the whole thing being squashed. That's exactly what the gain control is doing. So the initial step that we did of the gain, um, either squashing it down or, or in increasing the uh, level, uh, that would be uh, that would be the gain. So that's not what we're trying to do. What we actually want to do is we want to just affect those higher volumes. Um, and so uh, we're going to once again set this threshold. Um, and so that is the level at which the compressor is going to start acting. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to reduce those, uh, those higher volumes. Um, and this is going to basically squash down those, uh, those, those peaks. Um, and the amount that it squashes it down by is known as the ratio. So this is the amount above the threshold um, that it is being squashed by. So if here you've got, uh, you know, you can see there that, that that amount from the top that it's being squashed down by is effectively, you know, it's half as much as it was before. Uh, that means that the ratio is two to one. So that's where we get the ratio from. And if we come back to to the compressor then, uh, the compressor settings, um, the threshold then is the level at which it's going to start acting, and the ratio is the point, uh, is the amount that it's going to be uh, compressed by. I'll come back to this chart in a minute in terms of what that's representing. Uh, it will make uh, a lot more sense. Um, and then uh, what you then have is if you've got a plot then of what is the input volume 
um, versus the output. If we're changing basically the uh, you know the output based on that input volume, and what we're doing is we're adjusting the uh, the volume, um, then you've effectively got an input level here on the bottom, uh, and then on the side you've got the output, um, and then we have the uh, the the line going straight through it. If there was no compression at all, effectively you can see here that uh, you know what is going in is what is going out. It's just a straight line uh, right the way through the middle. So whatever your input volume is, uh, the output is gonna be exactly the same. So then um, what we've done though, is we've now set a threshold that we want this compressor to act on. Uh, and what we're gonna do is if we've got this ratio of uh, two to one arbitrarily that we've just talked about, uh, what that means is anything above that input level there, um, we are now compressing that by 50% in this case with a ratio of two to one. Uh, and so there we've got, uh, we could literally read off here if we've got an input level of minus 20 dB. By the way, I won't go into the dBFS scale, but you can see it goes from uh, zero being the loudest that can be registered by the device uh, down to minus 60, which is technically zero. So it's a bit confusing that that's back to front, uh, but that's the way that the scale works. I won't uh, go into the details of that, but just know that uh, basically this is getting louder um, and this is getting louder on the input as well. Uh, but you could read off here, um, what is the input? So if it was minus 20 dB um, FS coming in, then it would be minus 30, or oh, sorry, minus 25 going out there. So we've compressed it uh, and hopefully the graph just sort of represents this. You can kind of see what's going on. It is basically reducing the output volume relative to the input. So that is what the ratio is. Uh, and now actually, if we come and look at the uh, the device itself, so I'll come back to the Rocaster. Um, what you can see here is that is what this line is representing. So we've got the input down at the bottom and we've got the output uh, on that side. Uh, what you've also got on here is you have actually got these meters that are bouncing up and down. And the one on the right hand side, sorry, the left hand side is the input level. And the one on the right hand side is the output level. And you can see hopefully that uh, especially if I talk a little bit more loudly, um, that the one on the uh, left side is, if I can get my left to right correct way round, <laughs> the one on the left side is uh, higher than this one. Uh, and there's also this little red bar at the top, which is showing how much compression is being applied. So as I'm talking, the input level is being compressed um, to a lower level, uh, and that is how much compression is being added. So that just sort of explains what's going on in that chart. Um, but I'll explain in a little bit more detail of exactly uh, what's going on here. Um, so if this is the uh, the input, um, anything before the threshold um, at say point A is not being compressed at all. But as soon as we get to point B and point C, then some compression is being added. Uh, incidentally, this point here at which the uh, the, the uh, compressor is operating. Uh, that there is known as the knee, uh, and it can be either a hard or soft knee. And so you'll notice on the Rocaster um, that the uh, that there is a slight sort of curve to it, uh, which is what they call a soft knee. Uh, not specifically relevant, but it's just there nevertheless, uh, so that you understand some of these uh, terms. Um, and if I come back to the uh, the little chart again, um, then uh, what we can do here is if we apply a higher ratio, it's going to have more compression, um, and so it's going to bring those uh, those higher volumes uh, down even further. Uh, whereas if we had a, uh, a ratio like this of infinity, uh, you can get um, compressors uh, that have this. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that have this ratio of infinity, which basically means they never go over a certain level. Uh, there is a limit on this one, though. It doesn't go to infinity. In fact, just what does it go to? It goes to 4.5. So that's the maximum that we can do with the uh, with the Rocaster or the Streamer X. Um, and uh, so that is that's what we've got on here. Um, the other thing about this, though, is I mentioned about it sort of leveling things out and bringing up those lower volumes. Um, so it may be that you, yes, you want to compress those uh, those higher level, uh, higher volumes at the uh, at the, the high end, uh, but you may also want to actually boost up um, the lower volumes. And so this is called the gain. So this is where, um, up as well as applying that compression, we're then bringing up the overall level so that you know when somebody's whispering, uh, that is also being boosted up to a certain extent as well. So that's called the 
gain. So if I come back to uh, to here and we look at the uh, road central again, what we've looked at so far then is the threshold, uh, the ratio, uh, and then the gain. Now the attack and release are similar to what we've already talked about with the noise gates um, in terms of you know how quickly this uh, this thing actually takes effect. So if we were to look at this uh, this compressor again, uh, this waveform, we've got this threshold at which we're applying this ratio uh, and that we want to uh, basically squash down those higher volumes and maybe boost up the lower end as well. Um, then if we think about the compressor, um, then it is basically off until we reach that threshold at point A, where we go above that, uh, that volume. Um, and then it is going to open up um, uh, or apply the compression, I should say. Um, and that is called the attack. That is the amount of time, much like the amount of time it takes for the noise gate to swing open. Uh, the attack is how long it takes for the compressor compressor to actually sort of activate. Um, and then we've got point C, which is where we drop down below that, uh, that threshold again. Uh, and then we've got the release, which is how long it takes for the compressor to sort of deactivate. Um, and then the compressor would be off uh, below that threshold. So uh, the compressor is effectively acting between these points C and D. Um, and what it is doing is, as I say, it is sort of squashing down. But I should mention that although we talk about it in terms of dropping down those sort of high end uh, or higher volume uh, uh, things above the threshold, whilst it's acting, it is actually not, it's squashing the whole thing. So even those points where we drop down below the threshold, uh, if the the, uh, the gate, if the compressor hasn't deactivated, it is actually compressing all of those. But this is hopefully uh, a, a bit of a crude representation, uh, but hopefully it gives you an idea of uh, what is happening there. So, so far, we've talked about the mic gain. Um, we've also talked about the noise gate and the compressor. So you can see that I kind of jumped forward a little bit there. Um, but if we go back and start looking at some of these other ones, uh, there's some very similar concepts in here. So they're doing very similar things, um, but just maybe in a slightly, uh, slightly different way. Um, so they're all acting, as I've mentioned, at some point, uh, in some way on either the, the amplitude or on the frequency. And so these are then represented in these different charts. And the first one I'll talk about then in that signal chain after the gain is the high pass filter. So if we look at this chart here on the, uh, the right hand side, um, this is the one that I talked about with the different frequencies so that at any given moment, there are a whole range of frequencies. Um, and sometimes we might want to knock out some of those ones. And specifically, uh, you know, I've mentioned my aircon several times. Uh, I'm living right out in <laughs> more or less the jungle. So uh, here in the north of Thailand, so we don't have lots of passing traffic as such. Um, but there is um, uh, the, the same thing would happen with uh, aircon as, for example, you know, the rumble of a road nearby. Um, it's going to have this sort of low end noise to it, low, low tone to it. And so you may want to remove that. So if I come over to the uh, the high pass filter, what that's doing is um, this chart that you're seeing here is kind of representing a cross section of this chart here on the right hand side. So what you can see is that we are setting a specific frequency, which is this frequency, uh, below which uh, we are going to reduce the, uh, the, the the audio coming in at those, those particular tones. So the uh, human voice is, uh, obviously everyone's voice tone is going to be different, um, but uh, anything above uh, 90 is going to be into the vocal tone. Uh, but then, as I say, you may have a, a, a deeper voice. But this one is set to, uh, set to 80, so anything below Below that, um, what I'm doing is I'm removing um, those uh, that those tones. So it's removing stuff that isn't going to be in your voice, um, but is maybe it's going to be something in the background, like I say, that road noise or aircon noise. So the frequency here, what we're doing is we're setting the point at which that is going to take effect. And as you can see, if I move it up to 200, you will have heard a distinct change in the, the sound of my voice because I'm basically knocking out those lower frequencies. Whereas if I move it back this way, um, then it's allowing all of those frequencies to come through. Um, but here, if I had it right down at 20, it wouldn't be really knocking out anything in the background. So hence, I've got mine set to about 80, which is below, uh, you know, the tones in my voice, uh, but captures, you know, some of that background noise. You can also change how aggressive this is as well. So you may want to just have it uh, having a slightly lower effect, um, where you're changing the slope that is basically as you can see it's the it's how much of an effect it's having at those lower frequencies um, and so by increasing the slope you're basically knocking out even more of those uh, those lower frequencies or having a greater effect on reducing the amplitude again coming back to uh, this chart here we're reducing the amplitude of these lower tones around here
Um, so that is uh, where we're at with the, uh, the high pass filter. That's what that is intended for to knock out those uh, low frequencies. The next one then is the de -esser. And this once again is uh, working on the, um, this chart here as well. Um, and what that is, is it's the S sound that you have in your voice when you say S's. <laughs> and the point of this is that is all happening at a specific frequency. So it will be at a certain frequency here is where those S sounds are. And so the de -er is intended to remove uh, those. And so what we're doing then in this uh, chart here is we're identifying this particular frequency at which the S sounds happen. And then we are reducing the uh, amplitude, reducing the volume of those sounds. And so it means that it reduces um, that S sound. Now we've got some very similar and uh, familiar uh, terms here then that should make a lot more sense. Uh, the threshold, once again, is the volume of this particular frequency that we're going to uh, start to uh, act on the, uh, the audio. Um, we're basically using compression again, but just a really targeted compression at a certain frequency. So once again, just as we saw with the compressor, the ratio is going to be how much it's going to uh, reduce these sounds by. Uh, we've then got, just as we had in the compressor, the attack and release. So how aggressive we're going to be at sort of uh, applying this effect and, uh, and reducing the effect afterwards. Um, and then we've got the gain, which again, just as with the compression, is how much it is boosting everything else. So when we reduce those frequencies, how much everything else is, uh, is boosted by. And then this is the one that is unique to the de -er, which is the frequency. And this is because we are targeting a specific frequency. So if I was to increase this, you can see how we're changing the point at which this is having an effect. Or we can move it all the way down this way. So once again, uh, if we have a look on here, we are trying to now target a specific frequency where the, uh, where the, the S, pronounced S sounds are coming in. So if I go back to here, one thing that's um, tricky to do on here is you have to basically do it by ear. So as you move this backwards and forwards, you'll find, uh, especially if you say a sentence <laughs> that has a lot of S's in it, uh, you'll see where it's having more of an effect. If you actually look on the Rocaster Pro 2 or the Rocaster Duo indeed itself, then what you'll see is once again, we've got this kind of live view of it. So this is now uh, the, uh, the DS. If I come over to here, whoops, Daisy, wrong one. Back this way. Uh, so there we go, we're on the de-esser now. Uh, what you can see is, again, on the, just as we had on the compressor before, we've got the input level here and we've got the output level there. So when I say words with S in, <laughs> then you'll see that we have this compression whoops, being applied here and you'll notice when it's having more of an effect. So if I turn the frequency down like that, uh, you can actually see um, when it is having the most effect on your voice uh, and so when it's picking up these S sounds. So if I move it all the way here, you might find that even when I say things that have got S's in, uh, there is no compression going on of that. There is no um, adjustment being made. Whereas when I move it back this way, if I just move it back this way, uh, there will be a point, uh, I think around 3,500 hertz for me, uh, which is where this is then starting to have an effect maybe a little bit lower, um, and you'll see that actually happening here. So you can actually physically see when it is applying this effect. So what you want to be looking for then is uh, when that actual, you know, that, that compression to your voice is, uh, is happening just in there. So that is the de -esser, and we've then covered, uh, you know, what all of those different things are. Uh, so if we go and have a look at the, uh, the next thing in the signal chain, uh, which is, oh, wrong one. <laughs> Let me come back to here. Uh, so the de -esser, the noise gate, we've already looked at. The compressor, we've already looked at. Uh, so then you've got the equalizer. And once again, uh, this is affecting here. If we look at this chart on the left-hand side, the right-hand side even. I can't get my left to the right, the right way around today for some reason. So um, if we look at this on the, uh, the right-hand side here, um, the equalizer is intended to, just as we did with the, uh, the high-pass filter to knock out some of those low tones, here we've got a lot more sort of fine-tune adjustment uh, that we can make on uh, all of those different frequencies across that whole uh, spectrum there.
And that's what this is. We've got uh, these three different points, the high bell, the mid bell, and the low bell. Uh, bell, because I guess a bell curve. Um, and this is where we can adjust these. So we can adjust the specific frequency that we want to target at these three different levels. Uh, so if I move this, you can see that we're adjusting the high bell. We're adjusting the point at which this is taking effect. Um, and then we're also adjusting the, uh, the gain. So if I click into this one here, uh, I can actually just sort of knock out a lot of those uh, high tones like that. So he can hear that it's knocked out a lot of the high end in my voice. Uh, whereas if I put it all the way up there, then it's uh, actually boosting all of that. So uh, this is where you can adjust these. We can also do the same for the mids and the, uh, the low end as well. And once again, you could knock out all of that uh, low end or you could boost it all up as well. So this is what we're doing here. We're basically just adjusting um, what is going on in this uh, in this audio uh, audible spectrum. Now, there is actually a little sort of almost like a little hidden thing that you can do here. Um, not in this one. Um, or in fact, you can do it on here, actually, by double clicking. I know you can do it on the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2, but uh, yes, you can actually do it in uh, in the uh, the road central as well. I've just learned something. Uh, if you double click on here, so you can see that you've got the gain here. This is how much it is boosting it by. But if you double click, uh, you can actually change how, uh, how targeted it is. So if you did have some specific frequency that you wanted to either uh, boost or you wanted to reduce, uh, you could technically target it with this as well. So here you can see we're being very targeted in that particular level. Uh, double click again, and I could knock out that specific frequency. So uh, you can uh, do that. So it's double clicking is going to allow you to do that to either you know basically open up the area that that is targeting um, and you can do that with uh, with all of those so with either the high the mid uh, or the low so if I was in the uh, low tone if there was a really sort of persistent noise that I wanted to knock out then potentially I could uh, do it uh, with that you may end up you know, affecting your overall audio that way. But technically, um, I could, you know, sort of get a really targeted point at the low end uh, to knock out some specific, uh, you know, low end uh, hum, then I could, uh, as I say, I could potentially do that by just knocking out that particular frequency like that. Um, so let me just put this back to where, uh, more or less where it was somewhere around there. I'll sort that out all, out all out later. So that is the equalizer. So that's what all of those things are doing. And by the way, you can turn off um, any one or all of these as well so that it's just having uh, whatever effect on just one of them. Uh, you don't have to uh, have them all on. And with all of these things, there is a button to sort of deactivate it as well. So you can deactivate each of these individually and you'll see that it says deactivated if indeed it is. So that is the, uh, the equalizer. Now, the next two in the signal chain then um, are the uh, the big bottom and the aural exciter. And what these are doing is um, basically uh, adding something to the uh, the lower uh, tones in the case of the big bottom or the uh, higher tones in case of the aural exciter. And if I come back to um, the Rodecaster Pro 2, because uh, you'll see um, the sort of way that this is working a little bit clearer. Well, maybe not, but uh, you've got a slightly different uh, chart here. Um, so if I was to... Um, deactivate these uh, they're not doing anything but I'll turn them back on now uh, so if I adjust the um, the tune of the big bottom it's basically adjusting the frequency that that's applying to so I can uh, make that to be a wider frequency down at the bottom um, or I can uh, scroll here uh, to make it a lower frequency so hopefully you can see that I'm doing this on road central but it's having the same effect I can turn this one up or I can turn this one uh, down and that is affecting the sort of frequency range um, that it is applying to and then the drive is how much is being applied. So if I turn that all the way down to zero, it's doing nothing. And if I turn it all the way up to 100, it's doing more. And it's adding, uh, you know, richness to that, uh, that lower tone. Um, so, and this is kind of something that when people talk about radio sound, it's usually a combination of this and the compression. Uh, so if you've got like something really heavily compressed and, uh, and this turned all the way up, it gives you that sort of, uh, booming sound at the bottom, but I would say <laughs> use it with, uh, uh, use it wisely. Sometimes I think people go a bit overboard with it. Uh, but then the aural exciter, if that's the, the lower end, uh, then this one here is at the higher end and you can see the, uh, frequencies, uh, just bouncing up and down there. And now it's right 
right up at the uh, the top end of the chart. And if I turn it down, it's applying to a much greater range. Uh, and this is intended to give sort of more clarity at the uh, the higher end, uh, so more clarity to your voice. And then if you uh, go to the harmonics and the percentage here, um, zero is it's obviously doing nothing, not applying anything. Uh, and if you turn it all the way up, uh, then it is having uh, even more of an effect. So that's what um, those two things are. So that's part of the uh, there's two technical technically two things there one happening at the lower end and one at the higher end uh, but that is the uh, the exciter uh, and next is panning obviously just uh, left and right so a microphone going in is by default mono it's uh, you know not stereo uh, generally so therefore coming into the uh, single xlr cable at the back is just one single uh, mono channel uh, but you can choose whether you want that to be all on the uh, the left or the right uh, like that and you can pan left and right um, so that is basically the advanced audio uh, settings. So if I uh, just go to the next one, we're back around to the high pass filter. Um, so what we've seen then is that these are um, all acting in some way on the, uh, the amplitude or the, uh, the frequency or some combination of those two. Um, and if we go back to our signal chain then, here what we've looked at is one single signal chain for the microphone. Uh, but in actual fact, if you think about this in terms of the Rodecaster Pro 2, for example, uh, I'm on mic one input, but we do have all of these uh, for all of the other different channels. So you can see we've got four mic inputs. We've also got the um, the three USB channels and also the Bluetooth. And it's interesting to note, or it's notable that uh, you can apply these effects to all of those other channels. Now that can catch you out actually, if you've inadvertently turned on uh, some of these effects for your USB channels uh, and you've got audio potentially coming in from video or something like that, um, and you've inadvertently got the noise gate turned on on your, uh, you know, maybe USB main stereo, for example, um, then, uh, and you want to pass through audio from, you know, a video into the Rodecaster, but you've got a noise gate on, or you've got some of these other effects, it can actually have a negative effect. So you do need to be uh, aware of that, that uh, it is possible to apply these to these channels, but just be, make sure that you are aware that that is happening. However, it can work in your favor if, for example, you have got your uh, Zoom participants, for example, coming in on, uh, you know, the secondary channel or the chat channel, uh, and you do want to apply those effects to them. Uh, same with the Bluetooth. If you are, you know, having a caller uh, dial in, for example, um, then you may want to apply some of these effects to uh, to their signal uh, to improve that. Uh, just bear in mind that, you know, everybody's uh, voice is different and you know, everything is different. So uh, that is something to be aware of. There is no one size fits all for all of this. Uh, and especially when it comes to things like the Bluetooth channel and the USB, uh, you do need to be aware of that and make sure that, you know, you have got these uh, sort of set up appropriately. Um, the other one, I guess, would be the um, uh, the sound pads down there at the bottom. Uh, so that's basically just going to be straight through. Um, although there are a whole series of processing that I've not really talked about, which is the effects like the uh, you know the robot voice, the uh, the pitch shift, and all of that that you can do with the smart pads. Basically, those are all going to be happening you know after all of those uh, first processes in the signal chain. So uh, for clarity, <laughs> so that we don't end up with a uh, overly complex chart here. Um, I haven't included things like as I say the pitch shift, the the robot voice and all of these different ones that you can do with a roadcaster. Um, but if you've got all of these different signals coming in, then there is uh, one sort of final step, which is uh, the master compeller. So if I go back to the roadcaster, um, in fact, I'll go to this on uh, Road Central. Um, and uh, here in the, uh, the here, we just got to the same thing we just looked at. But if I come back out of here now, we've got all of our different inputs. I'll go back to here. And if we go to um, whoops, the, uh, the device configuration, um, then uh, the outputs, we've now got the uh, processing down at the bottom. Uh, there is these final two steps here, the master compeller and the output de delay. Now, the master compeller is actually very much like um, almost like an overall compressor uh, for all of the different things. So here you've got the threshold, uh, the attack, uh, the release, and the gain, not quite the, the same, um, but that is applying to everything. So just note that um, if you are going to be playing around with this, um, it's going to be affecting you know, the final output of everything else that is in that uh, signal chain. So uh, just coming back to the, uh, the signal chain then, um, here the master compeller is acting at this point. So after everything else, um, so once again, you know, 
it's kind of like fine tuning the overall uh, sound that you've got from, from everything. And then there is that output delay in there as well. Um, so if you want to add in a dis delay uh, to, the, uh, to the output, uh, you can do that in there as well. Um, so that is here. You can add a specific delay to your to your output going from the Rocaster. Uh, so, for example, if you want it to match up with, you know, you've got you're using capture cards and you want to add that delay in. Incidentally, on uh, the live stream that I did all about the Rode Streamer X and the pod mic, uh, the question came up about um, if you're using the Streamer X, do you need to have any delay with your audio? Because the this is both the capture device and the audio device. Um, and uh, I did check on this. And the answer is. Um, whatever is coming into the Streamer X uh, will be going out in sync. So the audio from your uh, your microphone that's plugged in and the video coming in will be uh, will be going out uh, at the same point. There's no sort of inherent delay that's been added here um, in the device itself, or, or that you need to correct for, I should say. However, um, there is always going to be an inherent delay with um, you know the camera and what it is sending out uh, over the HDMI. So you may still need to do some uh, adjustment. But uh, yeah, that was just a question that came up in the uh, the previous live stream. So just wanted to uh, to address, uh, address that one. Um, so where are we now? Let me just uh, check <laughs> where I'm up to in my, in my process. Um, so I think we've covered off all of those uh, different steps. I do just want to come back to the, uh, the chat, though, uh, and just check if I've uh, missed any uh, questions off here. And uh, hi to uh, everyone uh, popping in. Um, let me have a look where we are. Uh, I'm just looking for relevant questions here. Um, oh, I think I've just uh, answered uh, that Jesse. Oh, look at my, uh, my comments are all out of, <laughs> out of place on my screen. Yeah, so I think we, uh, we just covered that one. Hello, uh, hello, Road. Great to see you here. Thanks for stopping by. Um, and so any questions in here that I've missed? Great to see so many familiar faces in here. Uh, do you happen to know how to grab just the mic when you're using Unify? Let me get that one up there. Whoops, Daisy, sorry. Hey, great to see you here. Uh, Bubba, great to see you. Um, the uh, In terms of Unify, I don't actually know about that yet because I don't have Unify on the Mac, although Unify is coming to the Mac. Um, when I first covered all of the new devices, I got worried when they mentioned Unify because I knew that it, at the time it wasn't a, a Mac device, a Mac application. And so I had this moment of... Uh, concern that the Streamer X wouldn't work on the Mac. However, it does work fully on the Mac with uh, Rode Central in any case. Um, however, Unify is um, is coming to the Mac as well. I just don't have the uh, the version of that just yet, so it's go it, it's coming. Um, so I will be doing a whole series of videos um, on uh, on setup of the Streamer X with uh, with Rode Central, but then also with uh, with Unify as well. Um, so to answer your question. I'm, I'm not too sure <laughs> when, uh, when uh, anything about using Unify. I haven't got, to, I haven't got some examples uh, with it. Uh, I should say as well the difference there between um, uh, using the Streamer X with Road Central versus um, Unify. Uh, Road Central gives really good access to um, some basic audio routing. So they've got different setups in there, whether you are streaming, whether you're using it for presentations on calls or things like that as well. Um, then uh, then it has got, uh, you know, ability to adjust relative levels on all of those things. But Unify is going to give a higher level of um, uh, adjustability to that audio routing. So I do know that much um, so far that, uh, yeah, for, for most people, I guess Road Central is going to do the job in terms of just the the, the Rode uh, Streamer X being a sort of plug and play device. Um, but Unify is going to give a lot more um, uh, ability to do a lot more of that audio routing, a bit like we can do on the Rodecaster, um, Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Duo, where you can, you know, have specific mixes for specific channels. So I understand that that will be, um, uh, Unify will do more of that. Um, I realize I'm still not answering your question, <laughs> but just to uh, clarify why there are those two different applications and what the difference is. You know, do you need Rode, uh, Unify if you're already using um, Rode Central? So I will do a full comparison, though, as soon as I do have that uh, software. 
Um, hi, uh, Kalonji. Yes, I do um, stream into Discord, so I'm streaming right now into my uh, backstage area uh, for my channel members and also for my Take One Tech Academy members as well. Uh, so we, uh, I, I, I start the stream in there, have a little chat. Uh, Jeff tells me that I'm running late and I don't need to start <laughs> usually. So then I'll uh, start, and then after we finish the live stream, then we're still just backstage in the Discord uh, where we, uh, we where we chat after. So check out channel memberships if you're interested in that or indeed the uh, the Take One Tech Academy. I should probably uh, drop a little link into that. Uh, but the Take One Tech Academy uh, will uh, will give you full access to that backstage area as well as all of my uh, courses and things like that as well. And uh, speaking of courses, um, what we've just covered here in terms of this advanced audio was one of the main reasons, uh, and having just sort of delivered all of this, <laughs> one of the main reasons that I uh, created my Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass. Um, so you can find that out in the, uh, in the uh, I'll leave a link in the chat and also in the uh, description for the video as well. Um, and it really goes into full detail on how to use all aspects of the Rodecaster Pro 2. Um, I will be updating probably the name of this even uh, to call it the uh, Rodecaster uh, Masterclass, but technically it will cover the Stream X as well. Uh, so I'll have to figure out how to uh, name this. But it covers all of these different things in terms of how to set up these devices um, and uh, specifically the advanced audio section as well. Uh, and in that, I go into more detail on how to exactly sort of dial in and fine tune every aspect of all of these settings. So again, you know, all of this stuff that I've talked about today, um, but then going into a bit more depth on, you know, the actual process of, of setting this and what to listen for and all of that uh, kind of thing. Uh, so that's in the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 Masterclass. Now, I should say that uh, I have been running a giveaway for a Rodecaster Duo uh, because the Rodecaster Duo, to me, um, which is, uh, you know, uh, is available for pre-order right now. Um, but for me, it's kind of like the perfect device because what I love about the Rodecaster Pro 2 is um, the specifically the three USB channels, which gives us um, the ability to have, uh, you know, multiple multiple channels that we're working with on our computer. So I have my mic is going in here on this channel. Uh, this is the mic, you know, the main mic coming in at the back. Um, then I've got Ecamm Live, which is what I'm using for live streaming, but it's also what I use on all of my Zoom calls as well. Um, so it really allows you to really level up your kind of Zoom appearance and presence um, by using software like Ecamm Live, link in the description for that. Um, Right now, I've also got my uh, Discord here on this channel. So it means that if the folks in Discord were to say something, I'd be able to hear them. Uh, but I'm rooting it so that you're not hearing it. Then I have another channel here for Zoom. So these three channels allow me to have much finer control over uh, the audio that is, uh, that is on my, uh, my computer coming into the Rodecaster. And in fact, in actual fact, I've got another fourth channel, which is effectively a stereo pair coming into the back uh, so that I've got my system audio on that. So I've effectively got four then four channels then, which are for my uh, my uh, computer audio. Uh, and then we've got the, the sound pads here. Um, but when it comes to the sort of microphone inputs on the back, um, I'm only really using this one microphone input. Um, and then I've also got one for a wireless mic that I use. Um, it's not a Rode wireless mic, but now that Rode have integrated um, the Rode wireless go, and the new Rode Wireless Mies um, into the Rodecaster so that you can pair them directly. Um, I will just be swapping out my uh, my existing wireless mic for one of those. Um, so then I've got some sort of spare ports on the back um, because these four microphone ports that we've got on the back um, are largely redundant to me now. Um, and the Rodecaster Duo is effectively... I would say the perfect roadcaster for me because um, it's got, it's a smaller form factor. It's around about that big, <laughs> as I've worked it out. Where are we about about that size? Um, and everything's just kind of more compact, um, but it just doesn't have those. Um, uh, those additional two ports on the back for the microphones, but it's got all of the same power uh, built into it. So for me, as I say, it's, um, it's going to be the perfect device and save a little bit of uh, desk space, um, although I'll probably keep them both around in some way or other in any, uh, any case. Um, and because of that, though, because I'm thinking about all of the uh, sort of members of my academy and people who I um, you know coach with, it's going to be ideal for them, people who are using these um, devices uh, as largely business professionals or wanting to integrate them into their... Uh, 
you know, their presentations into their Zoom calls, uh, into their, you know, content creation for their business. So typically the people that I work with are generally more uh, either coaches or solopreneurs. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the four mic inputs um, are re you know, redundant for a lot of people. And so because of that, I was running a Rocaster Duo giveaway. I should have prepared a drum roll sound effect, really, shouldn't I? Uh, the giveaway is now uh, closed. Whoops, my camera's not attached there. The, <laughs> the Rocaster Duo giveaway is now closed, uh, but I have uh, drawn the winner. And so, where is the drum roll? <laughs> I don't even have any explosions or anything like that. But I can announce that the winner is Astrid Hudson from the US. <laughs> So I will be getting in touch with, that's enough of that applause. I will be getting in touch with, uh, with everybody actually who entered because I've got uh, something, uh, a, a little special offer for all of the, uh, the people who entered as well. But thanks so much for everyone who entered. I will be running uh, more giveaways uh, throughout the year as well uh, because yeah, I uh, like, to, like to share the love. But congratulations to the winner, Astrid. And uh, yeah, I will be uh, <laughs> certainly uh, getting in touch with uh, you very shortly. And uh, thanks, Rich. Yes, no expense spared on the, uh, the sound effects there. Uh, fortunately, the Rocaster has the applause built in. <laughs> so um, let's have a look at the, this last question then from uh, Keely. I say last question. If anyone has got any other questions, do feel free to, uh, to drop them in. Um, I wish the same audio routing capability was in the Streamer X. Uh, is this a potential firmware update or is it hardware limitation? So the, the thing about that is, Keely, that's what I was mentioning about the, um, the difference between Road Central and the um, uh, 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 Unify software. Uh, so Unify up until now has been PC only, but it is coming to the uh, Mac. Um, so as soon as um, I've, got, I've got that uh, beta software in my hands, I'll be doing a full uh, review of it. But that will give you uh, more of that audio routing capability. And in fact, I should say that there is another difference, which is on the Streamer X, I should really have this plugged in, shouldn't I? <laughs> I've been playing around with it so much and I've just uh, unwired everything for uh, this demo today. Uh, however, if you have got this Streamer X plugged in, um, then you have got this, uh, this mic input here and you'll see that just up above the top of the dial, um, there is this indicator, which is for either the microphone, uh, the headset or the, um, the wireless mic, because as well as the, uh, the, the XLR in the back, or the uh, Neutrik combo jack, so you can plug an instrument in there as well. Uh, you do also have this headset input, and as I've mentioned, you've also got the ability to have a wireless mic. Now, if you're using Rode Central, um, you're basically making a choice. You only have one of those, uh, and you actually cycle between them uh, by pressing the button. You can see how the little indicator light changes. However, as I understand it, with Unify, you do actually have the ability to have all of those connected. Um, so whilst you might be adjusting the level of one here specifically with that that uh, um, that selector there, uh, you will have access to all three of those uh, mic inputs, which means that uh, it's even more versatile then, rather than just a single mic and a capture card, um, it would then you know give you access to if you wanted to use a wireless mic as well. But you will have a lot more um, control over that uh, advanced audio routing. So uh, to answer your question, that is definitely uh, coming with the uh, Unify software. <laughs> um, Let's uh, let's see where we're up to. Yeah, if there's any other questions about uh, audio routing or about these devices, uh, I've got more videos to come on specific use cases of these. Um, yeah, I, I kind of lost my voice after <laughs> speaking to Road. When was it? A uh, week before last Friday, week before yesterday. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I haven't, I haven't made the content yet, uh, but I've got a whole series of videos coming out about the Streamer X, different use cases, using it with Road Central for these different applications, like, you know, using it with Zoom, using it with Ecamm and all of that kind of stuff as well. But any other questions, do feel free to uh, drop them in the uh, in the chat or, of course, in the uh, in the comments if you're watching after the fact. Um, definitely uh, also check out the Discord as well. So uh, you can ask any questions you want in the Discord. That's always going to be the best place to, uh, to ask these questions because you then get uh, not just my humble opinions, uh, but there's also a whole load of other really uh, wise people in there that can uh, help out as well. So, uh, yeah, really uh, looking forward to uh, seeing a few more of you in there. I think we're up to about 350 or something like that members in the Discord community. So, uh, yeah, definitely get uh, over there as well.
Thanks so much for uh, tuning in. And uh, a big thank you, I should say, also to Rode once again for uh, sending me the Stream X and the Pod mic. And uh, yeah, more content to come on that. Any idea when the Rodecaster Duo will be available? Last question. It is available now for pre order. Um, so if you go to uh, Rode's website, I got the email just. Uh, just uh, Yesterday, I think. Um, but yeah, if you go to Rhodes' website, um, it is uh, it is now available for pre-order on there. And uh, I'll just uh, drop the link into that. Um, oh, I see you've pre-ordered it. Just no idea. I don't have any further information, uh, Julian, on um, uh, on when it will be actually ready. Um, I don't have any further information on that. I will uh, I will try to find out though. Um, yeah, but for me, uh, somebody else mentioned it as well. It, the the Duo is the perfect device for me uh, personally, um, but the Streamer X um, I'm also highly recommending for a whole number of my uh, my you know the people that I work with. In fact, I would say it's almost kind of like fifty fifty. Uh, one that's going to be the perfect device over the other. But uh, yeah, really great to see these. Um, these new developments and these new devices. And I'll say once again, I'm really excited that Rode is getting into video. It's um, it's going to be really interesting to see because, uh, yeah, because I, I love the, uh, you know, the Rodecaster and the other devices so much. Yeah, pleased to see that they're getting into more aspects of, uh, of live streaming and video production. Oh, we got an answer. There we go. Um, the Rodecaster Duo, straight from Rode, thank you very much. The Rodecaster Duo is being loaded onto our trucks at our factory right now, uh, so should be in stores very soon. Fantastic. Great to, uh, great to hear. Um, uh, sorry, Margaret, um, I'm afraid it was <laughs> Astrid Hudson in uh, the US who won. So, <laughs> Okie dokie, thank you so much to everybody for, uh, for tuning in. I will be uh, back with no doubt to some more uh, road content <laughs> very shortly over the next week. And uh, I'll, uh, as soon as I've got a Rodecaster duo in my hands, I will, of course, be doing a uh, full uh, live stream and rundown of that once again. Okie dokie, have a great day, everyone. I'll leave a link to some other uh, road content uh, over on the right-hand side. Look at that, my camera's missing from my uh, scene. Never mind. <laughs> and uh, thanks to all of my channel members as well. And uh, thanks also to all of my Academy members and uh, all of the members of Discord too. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you very soon.